Alright, so we are good to go. Here we go. Let's time myself, see how long this takes me. <clears throat> Alright. Um, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so here's the problem. Add and search word data structure design. Oh god, it's gonna be a try, isn't it? Ugh. Okay, um, it's probably gonna be a try data structure that I'll use, and we'll, we'll put the start time here. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, so <clears throat> start time. My goal is to do this as fast as I can. PM. Uh, I'll write this down. Approach one. Try data structure because um <clears throat> i'm pretty sure it's gonna be a try data structure i will design a data structure that supports the following two operations add word and search word that's okay search word can search a little word or regular expression string containing only letters a to z or period a period means it can represent any one letter okay so so basically we'll add a word to our try data structure okay pretty simple so we'll add like bad dad and mad um, so let's see here, how am I going to do this? So what this data structure looks like will be, it will have a node, and then it will be connected to the, the B, and then I'll have the B connected to an A, and I'll have it connected to D, okay, and then my other data structure, maybe I'll have a D here, and then I'll have an A, and I'll have another D, and then I'll have an M, and an A, and a D, and then to be able to search through here, if you search for pad, it's going to return false because P doesn't match here. If you search for bad, it should return true, it should get this word. If you search <coughs> period AD, uh, okay, so that's going to be kind of a different search than what I'm used to. So how am I going to search when it's like, so how, how am I going to work in the period here? That's the question. Okay, so normally what I would do is the period would kind of go, no, that's not right. Uh, let's do this again here. <clears throat> uh, so the period can stand in for any of the characters. So how, so if that's the case, I would have to be searching down all three of these paths. Like I would say, okay, ignore this character, but go down all three paths, I guess. If you have a period, go down all three paths. And then you get to the next one, and you say, okay, continue down, and then you get to the next one, and, you know, if satisfies, it satisfies. So I would say the main idea is to continue down every single path. I don't know what they're called. Um, it's kind of like a tree data structure, right? So you, you fall down each of these paths until you get to the last character, and if so, and it matches, you return true. Uh, otherwise, you don't. And, like, for this other one is B, and it'll go to A and D and won't care. But yeah, so the period, if I see a period, that means whatever this node is attached to, go to all of those, travel to all of those. And, um, and these are all lowercase letters, I'm assuming. Yeah, only letters A to Z, lowercase, and the period, and the period means you can present any one a letter. Okay, so fair enough. Uh, you may assume that all words are consist of lowercase letters. Okay, so it's going to be a try data structure, but with the search, there's going to be a little bit of a added flavor onto the search, basically. Um, so, let's see. Okay, so one thing I can do is I can create a cr uh, the data structure. Let's say try. Um, definition init, uh, try this out, and then what do you want to initialize it, oh, I don't think anything, um, what I want to try data structure to be re representative with, um, I would say it should be characterized by a um, couple of attributes, for instance, if self.n, we'll set it equal to false at the beginning, um, and we'll have something called self.children, 
um, make that a dictionary. Okay, so then um, I guess uh, technically I could just do this right here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually, I don't need a whole. I'm gonna create a whole other data structure. You could just use this data structure, and then when you add a word into the data structure, what I'm gonna do is basically do if I'm gonna use the Python thing. But what I'm gonna do is my idea is basically create a dictionary and initialize a new object. So the word dictionary is I'm gonna keep initializing these over and over. So like. What I'm thinking is, take the current character, the first character in the word, um, which would be word zero, and then add that into the the data structure, but map it. So say, hey, this word has these children, and these children will be um, will be this try data structure. So yeah, so I'm thinking is saying self dot children for this word is going to and let's get rid of let's get rid of a key error I don't really want a key error uh, default dict and in the default dict it's kind of weird but the objects would be um, I guess mm, word dictionary. I don't know if I can do that, but yeah, I'm implying to make this dictionary map to you know word dictionary. So if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do a pen and then do um, initialize another word dictionary. Uh, Wait a second. Uh, pen. Uh, add word. Um, no, 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 no. A pen self dot add word. <coughs> word. Uh, everything after the first character. Okay, so what this should do is basically append to this dictionary this self dot add word which is gonna be a um, I don't think this is what I want to do <laughs> I have to initialize a new word dictionary can I uh, how do you do that how do you initialize a new um, word dictionary like this inside of your own um, list. <laughs> Let me think if this makes sense. So self is an object, right? It's the current object that you're looking at. So can I initialize? I think I can. So I could initialize another word dictionary, right? Like say word dictionary, initialize another word dictionary. And in that word dictionary, I want to call self dot add word on it so I think word dictionary and then you don't really need anything there and then do dot on this one we'll see if this works <coughs> uh, yeah so my intent here is that it's going to um, create this word as the key so the key will be a character and then it's going to have these children. It's going to be attached to another word dictionary, another instantiation that will have no children when we first instantiate it. Um, and I will call add word on that one with the rest of the words. Um, and this will keep going on until if not word, which just means if not word, that means then the word length is zero. And you know you're kind of screwed at this point. What you want to do is um, say self dot n equals true, and um, yeah, and this is your else condition. Yep. Okay.
because you don't have to return anything. Get rid of this and get rid of that. Okay. <clears throat> so this will be add word. Um, let's test it out. Uh, so we're going to test it out by printing out self.children. Um, maybe I should do this one. I think I'm okay. <laughs> we'll see what this does. Default digs is not defined. Oh yeah, you're right, it's not defined. My bad. Okay, let's go again. Round number two. Word dictionary object has no attribute of pen. Uh, isn't this trying to pen to the... The this uh I guess this depends on okay let's print out word zero let's read it let's see what the inputs are I'm pretty sure it's just a a string uh, okay so it's B so it's just a string okay and then what is what is this It's a word dictionary object. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wait a second. So I guess it initializes a word dictionary object. That's right, that's what a default dictionary will do for me. It initializes it um, already, so I don't have to initialize the word dictionary object. So okay, cool. So we are getting, um, these are not gonna be true, I haven't coded that yet. But we are getting basically what I was hoping to see, which is, you know, um, these things are mapping. So see now D maps to this object uh this word dictionary object with this location hash map or not hash map but hexadecimal digit hexadecimal string of digits a then maps to this one and b then maps to this um one and here we have d maps to this one a maps that one b maps to that one and um should be good to go so then all we need to do is do a search um so if not word we want to return self.n. Um, I'm gonna have to change the code up, but right now I'm just gonna code a very simple thing. Um, I don't need else because it's return. I'll do self. Sorry, uh, self. Search. So, so the search method needs to look at the children, right? So, so if word zero is equal to uh, Is self dot children um, I want to look at the key how do you look at the key um, let's see let's try some stuff out print self dot children word dot keys uh, Oh, I forgot how to do this. I think it is self.children.keys. I think that is the function call. BDM. And 
and that's uh that's just a list let me think here right I'm doing a list uh, is there a way to So it says the key can be used to access elements of dictionary as we can do for lists. Without use of keys, no other mechanism provides access to dictionaries as list by index. Okay. I kind of don't want to do this, but yeah, here we go. Um, Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say if word zero in self dot children dot keys kind of worried about this um else um this is if it's in this but it might not be in it and in else case I would just basically do um <clears throat> if it is in it then we want to do self dot search word one um but not on that we want to do it on um self dot children with word zero so you want to search on this object uh, and we'll search this one and then else if it's not in it then i guess return false um, if word in self the children, um, uh, this is just on one case. Uh, okay. And main goal here is to see if it'll work for BAD. No, it doesn't work with BAD. But okay. Uh, let's print. Let's print. Um. Let's print a word actually. Let's see how it's iterating through it. So it gets B, okay, and then it gets A, D, and then it has D, um, right, and this is for B, A, D, right? So P, A, D returns false instantly. But B, A, D, you get all the way to the D, and then um, print self dot n so i can figure out what's going on and then, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then print self dot n here because i'm just doing this because it's going to do it's going to say false 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 and it's going to say true um, Print word, print length of word. I think that'll work. Might not work. <laughs> zero, right? Zero. So print self dot n. True. So why is it not returning true here? Uh, that's weird. Um, what? It's literally returning true, is it not? I 
Oh, you know why? It's because you have to, um, you have to return from there. Yes, this is stack. Okay, so now it works. Okay, cool. Um, so then, oh, let's see what else we're missing here. Okay, we're not missing anything here. Okay, now we have to figure out how to do this with the period. So the period, whenever we see a dot, so if word and self dot children, you do this. Um, I guess I'll do another case. Elif um, word zero equals uh, this. So if that's the case, you have to iterate through the key. So you have to go for um, wd and self dot children dot keys, and for each one you how's this gonna work <laughs> you have to create a call for each one um return self dot children or this yeah make it what am i doing for the uh words uh you just do wd dot search word one yep um okay i don't think that's gonna work but um string object has no attribute search is wd okay sure so i actually want the values <clears throat> I wonder how this is working. So can I see? So pretty on self dot n. So it's saying true. It says three two one zero. Um, it's interesting. I'm just gonna test this out. See if this will pass my test, and then I'm gonna explore a little bit more about it because I'm doing tiny bitty 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 things. I'm not sure. Also, this return false should be nothing else. There's no reason to have an else there. There we go. Yep, so return false if not word, return if word zero, return. And I guess this could be another if because um, this is all just returning anyways. If not word, else, and that doesn't return anything. And this is that. Oh, and get rid of this. Okay. And we're gonna submit. All right, so it doesn't work. And um, I guess we could copy this input and put it in here. So this would be a lesson to learn. So why does it not work? So we get no, no, false, 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 no, no. False, true, 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 false, 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 true. So when does it not work? So it doesn't work here, which is basically we have one, two, three, four. So it's after the fourth search. So we have one, two, three, four. So it's the fourth search. No, it's the third search. So it's this one. Um, and I don't know what this search is. So we add words. So we add these words we add a t we add a and d we add a n we add a d d we add a uh wait one two three four four adds one two three four adds a search we search a cool that probably returns false uh then we search a t that probably returns false as well and then we add b a t and then we search dot a t that should return true why would that not return true? Um, let's see. Let's print out self dot children dot keys. Because B should have been in there. Okay, so let's see. So so I'm looking for the the this one, the B one, right? So it should have a B. Um, there's another way to do this. 
there's another way to do this where basically you create um this is gonna sound stupid but what if you just create a separate one for a dot and always from the dot there's gonna be a b and there's gonna be a d and there's gonna be an m and there's gonna be another dot i don't know that's kind of making the tree ridiculously bigger um kind of it would make more sense to be able to yeah because i mean this is just making it bigger right and then a and another dot, and I say, okay, well, this goes to D, and this goes to another dot. Plus, if I do that, don't I technically need to have a dot here and dot here in case it maps to it? So th that doesn't make sense. It makes the most sense to be able to just have then that algorithm that when it sees a a dot, it just says, I'm gonna traverse here, I'm gonna traverse here, and I'm gonna traverse here. Right? Okay, so there's just a small problem in my um in my algorithm here I'm 26 minutes in not good okay i don't think i'm gonna finish this in time uh by the 30 minute mark so here we have adword adword search adword search search oh, okay so it's returning false here when we're searching dot at so why would it do that why would it return false probably because uh this one sorry this dot so it's gonna say dot so it's gonna go b so it's going to go all the paths. It's going to go because we have a B, and we have an A, and then we have a T, and then we have an N, and then we have a D, and then we have a D, and then we have a D, and then we have a B. Also, one thing that I don't know if it's discussed that much, but um, the reason why I'm using a tri data structure for this problem is because. The most queries you have is 26, and the the longest the um, because you can only have 26 characters, you know that you can only have 26. Um, I'm trying to talk about this, and I don't even have it over here. You have like 26 here, so like okay, I have 26 here, and then you go in my next row. My next row can have basically 26 attached to each character, which means you can have basically 26. Um, times the previous 26 is 26 26 actually doesn't that kind of grow really quickly uh 26 26 um did i did i mess this up is this how a tray data structure works or will it map to the same a hmm, maybe it makes more sense if a tray data structure is like this it has a b then it has a d then it has an m because what I'm thinking is you really want to limit the size of this and the height of this you can limit to 26, 26 well the size of it will be the length of the word, right? length of the word um, but the the width of it can be limited by 26 and if you limit the width by 26 you have a a tree that's gonna have basically just um, um so the reason why it's 2 to the n is because each layer multiplies by 2, but this layer, each layer doesn't multiply by 2, so it's just going to be 26 times the length of the word, which means that it basically is linear with respect to the length of the word, because this is just a constant. <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking. Um, that's just the mathematics here to analyze the complexity of this algorithm and why we want to do it. Right? This is right. Like, normally you have something like this, right? And it just keeps getting, you know, bigger and bigger. So it's like the previous is two times bigger than the previous one, right? So you just, you do two to the n, you're like two times bigger. But at this one, each one is going to be 26. It's not going to get larger. So it's really just the length of the word um, times 26. And um, the cool thing here is what I'm thinking is what if you have this maps to an A? And then this maps to an A, and then this maps to the A, and then this maps to a D, right? Like this makes sense because well, what could happen is you could say, okay, I travel to my D, and I say, okay, well now I'm gonna travel to an A. I'm like, wait, well, there's an A, and I'm gonna travel to the D here.
I feel like this still gets really big. So <laughs> the worst case scenario is that each layer will grow by 26, I think. So that is 26 to the end. Um, so I mean, I guess that's right. I just, I thought maybe you can make it simpler, but yeah, you can. Um, Hmm. It's an interesting thought that I had, but it's completely erroneous because, I mean, it kind of works here, right? Like, if you go to B, then you see, okay, well, now I'm going to go to A, and I'm going to go to D. Like, it doesn't matter if this A is attached to this D or it's attached to this B, right? Because it's attached to the same one. But, uh, and then what if you have K? I don't know, I feel like this would work. Uh, let me see if there's other, um... Why would it be bad to not do that? Anyways, this is a secondary issue. I still want to be able to solve this problem in time. So, um, so I think the issue is arising here. So I think one thing I could do is I could print out wd.search word one and see what's going on here. Um, And my code. So you see, it's running. It's running refresh fast. True. So it looks like um, we get false false, and then we actually get true. It's resemble. So there's a true here for one of these. Um, but it goes down the path of every character. So like we have a. A, um, I think we have a B and A, so it's going to, it's going to go down to B. And it's going to go down to A. Um, and I think the A doesn't work out, so when it goes down to A, it returns false. Okay, this is not going to work. I don't know why I clicked that. Alright, I'm going to see what the word is. In a T, and we get false. Okay, and then we have A, A, T, A, T, and we get false. And this time we get A, T, A, and N. Dot, what does dot mean? Oh, because you're searching it, that's right. So you're searching A, and then you're searching dot AT, right? I mean, here's dot AT, it goes to AT, and then it returns false. And then, um, what's this? I don't know. Then you search. Um, then you search dot at again right here, and it goes to at, and it goes to false, and it goes at, and dot, and 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 it's true. So it's just true for one of them. Um. I'm pretty sure it's not working because when you have this thing down here where you have this return, it's like, it's like basically, I think this is what you want to do. You want to say if wd.search word one, so if it's true, then I think you want to return true. Otherwise, you know, it's going to return false regardless. Yeah. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Is this right? So we get true. Uh, two trues. Two trues. 
Uh, yo, that looks actually correct. Because <clears throat> I guess I don't know how to fix it. Whoa, that fixed it. Sweet. Okay, I think it took me a little over 30 minutes. Let's see my clock. Okay, it took me 35 minutes, but I did get distracted. I was starting to analyze the tri data structure in more detail than I should have um, because I was just trying to solve this problem as quickly as I could. So I feel like I did kind of succeed in doing my mission, but at the same time I didn't because I was being dumb or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, so this actually, this algorithm actually works. Uh, it passes this test, which we, want, which we wanted. And I mean, that was cool. Like changing this worked. And I mean, I understand why it worked because some of this path it was going down is going to return false. And those paths might end up because it's going to return false. It's going to return false for the problem you know but like because it, it might go down the truth pass at the beginning so it returns true but then you know th then it goes down the false path and then it returns false and i think this is what was happening um, um actually but now what's going to happen is it's going to go down each of these paths but the one that returns true is the only one that matters so if the one that returns true is going to return true if there's none that returns true, that means that they must have returned false here. Um, returned false because of this, probably. Um, actually, is this ever going to get called? Yeah, this will get called if basically the word doesn't match in the keys right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, so good problem. Um, use a good, a good implementation of tri data structure. And now I'm going to explore this question I have about tri data structure. So I'm going to end the this recording um thank you for watching thank you for watching me um basically relearn the tri data structure and i'm gonna stop this